use hashtag offense to get your questions on the show. So new hashtag offense. And I'll ask questions right now live here on Facebook and on YouTube on the Michigan football offense following the win 42-25 where the offense just disappeared. The defense, I mean, the whole team disappeared for almost a quarter and a half uh, and they win 42-25. But use offense to get your questions on the show. All right. I don't even know what this says. Arsenal Royale, uh, Michigan, uh, hashtag Michigan. He says, Yoder, do you believe Shea is being handcuffed on those read options by the coaching staff? Yeah, in a lot of ways, I think he's being uh, handcuffed on the read option. I mean, if you watch the defensive end, they don't crash. I mean, they don't sit there and contain Shea every time. And so you're supposed to hand the ball off when the defensive end crashes, right? On a read option, I'm not talking about an RPO because, by the way, the announcers of the game don't know what an RPO is. An RPO, let's just go to RPO school here for a second uh, for everybody watching. An RPO is a run and pass option. It is not the quarterback's option to run. It's not a rollout, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit this guy or I'm going to take off running. It is run as in handoff to a running back or pull back and hit a short pass. And sometimes there's different passing schemes, but it's not the quarterback run. But a read option is what we're talking about here is when the quarterback has the chance, you get, it's, it's a, basically a designed running play, either one, and hand off to the running back. If that defensive line crashes, or if we're going this way, this defensive line crashes, I pull back and I should have at least four to five yards before anybody can hit me. Uh, you make one move and you've got 10 yards. That's the read option. And Michigan's not running it very much. And when they do, it's just not that effective. So I can't imagine if we watch film and just stare at that defensive end, if you knew the play was coming, that he would be crash, he would be containing every time. And as such, he's got to be being handcuffed by the coaching staff, telling him to hand off more, hand off more, hand off more. But that's the question. Let's keep it rolling. Hashtag offense. Brad uh, Gensheimer, should Hastings be the starting running, running back? I mean, why not? I think him or True Wilson. Um, Charbonnet played nice early on. He certainly did. But he still looks like he's not 100% to me. Hassan Haskins has been pretty consistent the last few weeks. Um, was the best running back in the second half, at least today. And Zach Charbonnet has a little bit of fumbleitis all year. So Haskins is your, your leading rusher here against Illinois. And it's a big day for him. This is a, maybe a career-changing day for him. You, you get a 100-yard game as a, as a young player. As a guy, frankly, was fourth or fifth in the depth chart when it started the year. And you get 125 yards uh, in a game against Illinois on the road. You're going to start getting more looks. So I think he's going to be in the rotation a lot more going forward. I think he certainly passed Drew Wilson, even though I'm not sure if I believe agree with that because I like what true brings to the table for this offense but you've got at least two running backs who have shown they can put yards uh get 100 yards and that's a pretty good thing Charbonnet is second 100 yard game of the year and Haskins his first that is the stats for the running back a next question from Joseph Yatuma can Michigan stop running 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 back and tight end screens I mean Running, running back. I thought it was like running, running, running. I uh, see it's in two lines. Uh, okay, stop running the running backs and tight end screens. Um, like the passing game has been very disappointing. Um, the tight ends aren't a big part of this offense, it, it seems. Uh, you're not getting, you know, guys with four, five, six catches like you used to with, with Jake Butt. And the route trees for the offense just seem very, very uninspired. So, I don't know what to, like, if you're going to roll out new things, if you're going to be creative, if you're going to be inventive, you do it against Middle Tennessee State, Army, uh, Rutgers, and Illinois. And outside of the first half against you know, Middle Tennessee State, this offense has looked very uninventive. And with Ben Mason back in in the first half today for, for, for a few plays there at fullback, I don't know who's calling the plays on this offense anymore. So we'll see what go, happens going forward. But there was clear emphasis on the running game today. It worked for a lot, a lot, a lot of the game, but wasn't enough to maybe satisfy or certainly uh, think this team's going to beat Ohio State. So that's the question there from Joseph Yatumo. James Sessions says, "Get rid of Harbaugh and hire Gaddis as head coach." All right, show's over. I'm leaving. All right, guys, stop. Gosh, guys, they pushed me back on set. Uh, we have to talk after the show. I'm trying to leave, but they pushed me back on set and said, I've still got to go for, uh, I don't know how long we're going to go. We might go an hour and a half here. I'm just ranting and raving here. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I would not want Josh Gass as the head coach. I actually, frankly, don't want him as the offensive coordinator anymore, uh, unless something changes. I mean, I, I 
I will reserve the right folks to change my opinion on Gaddis if things change, but you can't make any other decision right now that say, other than say with Josh Gaddis, he's not getting the job done. So I don't think I want Gaddis as the head coach, but uh, I guess James Sessions does. Courtney Harper, AKA come on son, Harper, my man, how you doing? Why do we play so many players in key positions instead of using uh, our best players to their maximum potential? Um, the fact that this team doesn't go four wide receivers is troubling, is surprising. The fact that you've got tight ends and you've got bunch formations on this offense in all, you know, every drive, every other play is troubling. I watch Oklahoma or Clemson or Alabama or Ohio State play, and it looks like a different sport on offense compared to the, the, the game that Michigan plays. The bunching formations isn't helping anybody. I talk to people who watch Michigan who have no vested interest in the game, and they're like, what are you guys doing on offense? Like, they throw the ball, and there's like four of your dudes standing in the same place, and no one knows who's supposed to catch the ball. I'm like, look, I, I totally agree with you. So get some momentum going with the passing game. Start sending a guy deep, a guy in a deep out, one guy kind of over the middle, and one guy in like a 10-yard curl. Like, watch, just watch Oklahoma or Alabama play one game and do that, right? I agree with you, Courtney. I, I don't understand why Luke Schoonmaker is getting a shot when Donovan Peoples-Jones and Treek Black are barely getting any looks from this offense under Josh Gass. Let's play PCs with the next questions. James, what do you think will take to get Harbaugh fired? Um, this is a pretty good question because I don't think the average person out there, Michigan fan or otherwise, college football fan, understands how the dynamics are going to work here. What's going to take to get Jim Harbaugh fired? I think they'd have to lose every game here for the rest of the year for him to get fired, right? Six straight losses, go five and seven in the year. And there will be people calling for him to get fired after Michigan goes eight and four uh, this year, and after they lose it to Ohio State, after they lose to Notre Dame, after they lose to Penn State, which I don't see any reason why any of those don't happen at this point. But the dynamics at Michigan have been set up in a way that there's no one who has the power to fire Jim Harbaugh. There's no one who has the power to say, we're going to eat $15 million, right? Um, <laughs> uh, Ward Manuel doesn't have the power to fire Jim Harbaugh. Michigan's president, Schlichel, uh, I can't remember his first name at the moment, but he doesn't have the power to fire Jim Harbaugh. He doesn't have the power to write a $15 million check. The Board of Regents aren't going to fire Harbaugh. And it's very similar to Ohio State under Jim Tressel um, and even Urban Meyer in some ways. But there's the famous line where someone asked Ohio State's uh, – Athletic director Gene Gene Smith, uh, 2011, after the tattoo scandal. Do you think you're going to fire Jim Tressel? And he basically said, not basically, he actually said, I just hope Jim Tressel doesn't fire me, right? It's the same thing that's going on in Michigan right now. No one has the power to fire Jim Tressel. He makes too much money. He's got too big of a buyout. And there's, there'll be no support in firing him um, unless the team completely falls off the wagon. But if he keeps going to 8-4, 9-4, 10-3 and every year, He's going to be the coach for as long as he wants. So there's no one with the power to fire him at the University of Michigan. Maybe the only person with enough power to fire him is myself on this show with the vast reach that we have. But thank you for the question. Let's play PC. Bet DSI. Bet DSI is our presenting sponsor today. Promo code GOBLUE gets you 120% deposit bonus to bet on college football, to bet on the NBA, to bet on the NFL, any sport you want, really. You can bet on golf, you can bet on tennis. Those are the ones I put money on. I got started with them. Promo code GOOBLUE, 120% deposit bonus. That's just a great deal, guys. Like, I would recommend you do it. It's a lot more fun. I pay attention more to other college games if I've got money on them. I've got some cash on Iowa tonight. Lost Michigan, but the 120% deposit bonus lets you get your feet wet, lose a few games, and still not lose your real money. So bet the bonus money to start. When you're getting your feet wet, if you haven't bet with them, chatsports.com slash bet will take you there. Use that promo code GOBLUE when you make your first deposit. All right, Jeff, sorry. <laughs> what was the halftime speech? Good question. I'm getting messages from our coworkers. I'm getting messages from friends. And we even used it in our Michigan football instant takeaways, which was, wake up. What, is Harbaugh napping? Is, is, are they going into the locker room and... Everybody just takes some naps. They having a beer or something like that. I don't. I have no idea. Like it's 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 troubling. It's it's very surprising how this team can come out so uninspired. The offense has done nothing again, right? In the second half, last week did nothing in the second half. Really, outside the first six minutes of the game, 
And today, 28-7, 355 yards, but then you come back, you get 130 yards after half. You give up 25 straight points in the uh, in the second half. 18 of them in the in the second, you know, 25 straight points in the game, 18 of them in the second half. But really, like, you know, that last touchdown, you know, that could be considered almost like a second half point. But this team sleptwalk. This Illinois team, guys, I lost money on Michigan today betting them, and it makes me even more mad because Michigan should have beat them 42-0. Illinois had no business scoring a point on Michigan's defense today, and they didn't bring this team out motivated enough to uh, to get the job done. So I guess we're just going to see what happens. But those are the uh, the team stats for the Michigan win, 42-25 to over Illinois. Let's keep rolling with questions. Joseph Utuma, what's up with Nico Collins? Didn't make the trip. The official word is he's working through something. Um... Kind of reminds me of Brady Hoke. Look, I don't have any inside information. I'm a great tea leaf reader, though, for Michigan football. You had four starters sitting out today. One of them was pretty much known in Josh Ross, but then Nico Collins, LeVert Hill, two stars of the team, and then Quiddy Pay, starting defensive lineman, uh, didn't play. LeVert Hill, Quiddy Pay injured Josh Ross, obviously. Um, with no insights, no... Uh, source on this i am just going to say i would not be surprised and neither should you if we find out that nico collins maybe we'll never find it out right nico collins uh reason for seeing this game had nothing to do with injury i'm not going to say anymore because the, the haters and losers are already lurking in the comment section waiting to call me out but nico collins didn't play i'm not going to tell you why and by the way uh alicia make sure we get those facebook comments too we got a lot of you watching uh, we'd love to watch us on Facebook, so make sure we're showing those people some love here live following Michigan's win over the Illinois Fighting Illini and their bearded coach, Lovey Smith. All right, keep things rolling. Arsenal Royal, you like Charbonnet or Haskins more uh, as our back? I mean, I don't know if I like either one of them as like an all Big Ten back. I'm not sure if I like either one of them as the guy I'm going to expect to be a thousand or fifteen hundred yard rusher for this team, um, but I'm glad to see Hassan Haskins break out. I'm glad to see someone else get the job done. He had some really nice stats today against the Illini. You see him there on your screen, and it's good to see, right? Um, I'm not sure what else to say uh, about this offense. The, the, the running game was a focus today. It was very clear of that, and Has Haskins and uh, and Charbonnet both put over hundred yards, but I want to see them both in the rotation um, more, and I think we will see that, um, you know, moving forward for this team. So um, I don't know if you can consider either one of them a starting running back at this point. I think you're going to put a lot of guys in there, True Wilson, Hassan Haskins, because then you're going to see more of uh, Zach Charbonnet, and unfortunately you're going to see more Christian Turner, and we'll just see what happens going forward. But it all starts next week where Michigan's got four games that they could and maybe should lose uh, out of the last six for the rest of this game. All right, Greg Allen, rest of the season, I should say. Greg Allen says, is Harbaugh blind or does he not care about giving more reps to the players that can perform? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's troubling. Uh, he's got those glasses on, so maybe he's losing his eyesight and those aren't working for him. But um, why does Diamond Peoples-Jones only get two or three targets? Uh, sometimes a game, maybe a half here and there. Why does Streak Black get two catches in a game for Michigan football? Um, why did you not? Why do you not play Mike Sanders? Still? Why do you hype Mike Sanders still up all offseason? And it wasn't just the media. It wasn't me. And I was actually one of the ones not hyping him up. But Josh Gaddis is hyping up Mike Sanders still. Jim Harbaugh was hyping up Mike Sanders still on his podcast. Um, I, I don't understand it. To be frank uh, with you, I, I don't really know why the offense runs the way it does. Maybe these coaches just aren't going together. But. Um, you're not seeing any Mozzie Smith on the defensive side. You're not seeing any Chris Hinton on the defensive side. And then on the offensive side, you've got younger players uh, uh, that aren't getting the time, and you're getting veteran players. Tariq Black, Nico Collins, who didn't play today. Diamond Peoples-Jones, every game, two, three, four catches for those guys, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards. But you should be getting, against Illinois, you should be getting 125 yards from three or four of those guys. Uh, and putting up a lot better stats. I mean, Ohio State would have put up 700 yards against this Illinois defense today. But that is the word from our Michigan football live post-game audience Q&A on the Michigan football offense.
Hey there, Michigan football fans. Thanks so much for watching the Michigan Football Report. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe to Chat Sports, college football, NFL, NBA, new videos every single day, the number one sports network on YouTube. Ready for another Michigan football video? I got you hooked up right here.